<laughs> Listen, today I want to talk about Africa. <laughs> yes, I am back again to talk about Africa. But to be specific, I want to talk about Libya. You see, if there's one thing that they don't want you to know or the story that they don't want to hear is the story of how Libya became heaven on earth. They don't want you to know that story. I mean, for what for? For who? But guess what? I am here to remind you how Libya became heaven on earth. And I know they will not like this video. But hey, listen, I am African. What can I do? <laughs> yeah, I need to talk about this. People need to know the story of what Libya was during the time of Muammar Gaddafi. A leader that wanted a one Africa. A man who loved his country. Who died for his country. And a man who wanted the whole entire Africa to be like his country. And they took him away from us. Because they knew that Muhammad Gaddafi was a force to reckon with. Force to reckon with. <laughs> that is English. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, I mean, for who? A man who was taken away from Africa too, too soon. A man who was called a dictator when he was not a dictator. Listen. You see, while the Western world painted this man a terrorist or a dictator, Deep down their hearts, Muhammad Gaddafi was the name that they feared the most. I'm telling you, I mean, for, for who? They feared this name just by the mention of the name. They were shaking because they knew the abilities that Muhammad Gaddafi, Muhammad Gaddafi had. Yes, it's true, I mean, for, for who? Eh? <laughs> Even now, when they hear the name, they shake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'll remind you the reason why why that man was turned against his own people. I'll remind you. Number one, do you know that in Libya it was the only country without debt? Do you know that Libya was the only country that had people of Libya own flats, all of them, no one was homeless. I mean for what for? For who? Did you know that the people of Libya were, were, were the only people that could get loans at zero interest rate? Huh? How? I mean, for, for, for who? Eh? Did you know that in Libya there was nothing like electricity bill? Electricity was free in Libya. <laughs> Hold on, I'm still going. I mean, for, for who? I have more information for you. I have more information. Did you know Gaddafi had vowed to make sure each and every citizen of Libya had a house and put his parents last? He said, I will, my parents will be the last ones to own a home. Tell me which African leader right now can put their parents last to receive a house in an African nation. Tell me which one. <laughs> you feel it, huh? <laughs> Can your president put their parents last to receive a house? But Gaddafi made sure each and every citizen of Libya had a house. And the parents were last to have a house. He had vowed. I mean, for what for? For who? Oh, 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 oh. I'm still going on. Listen. <laughs> the interesting one. Did you know that in Libya, all the newlyweds were gifted 50,000 US dollars to buy their new house? The newlyweds, the newlyweds, you people that are getting married, you, you people that are couples, you newly, newlyweds, you people that are having weddings. Imagine having a wedding and after a wedding they give you a $50,000 to buy your new home. That's how the people of Libya lived the time that Muammar Gaddafi was still alive. I want you to sit down and just think critically for a moment. Think critically for a moment. I'm still going on. Did you know that in Libya, education and treatment, health facilities, they were free. If the Libyan citizens did not manage to find any medical facilities or medical, uh, medical treatment within Libya, the government would automatically fund that citizen to go out abroad to seek treatment. Not with their money, no. Oh, that is an African country. Libya for a moment was like a dream for some of us. I mean, for, what, for who? It became heaven on earth. <laughs> Listen, what more? Did you know that in Libya, Libya was the only place where someone after graduation, they failed to find employment. The state, the state, the government would pay that person the average salary of the profession as if one was already in employment. Just paying them. In short, they were paying you for graduating. <laughs> While waiting for employment, they were paying you for waiting for employment. Which African country right now would do that for you? <laughs> ah, 
I think now I understand why that man was taken away from us. I'm telling you, I've been fought for who? Wait, I have more. I have more. You understand why that man was taken away from us. Listen to this one. <laughs> this one, I don't think there's any African country that can even do this. Listen, did you know that in Libya, <laughs> a portion of Libyan oil sale was credited to the bank accounts of every Libyan citizen? Huh? <laughs> Which country? <laughs> You in, in your country, you, the minerals that they are digging and whatever mineral or natural resources they are digging in there, do you even get a share, you? Ah! <laughs> Who do give you a share? You tell me. Eh? Some of you have never even seen any benefit from those natural resources up to date. Our friends in Libya, when Muammar Gaddafi was alive, they would get a portion of every Libyan oil sale credited into their bank accounts. Ha! 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 Did you know that in Libya, any Libyan taking up farming as a career was given free land, free farming equipment, and was also given free livestock to kickstart their career for free? In Libya, only in Libya. Did you know that? Who would give you farmland this time? Eh? Even your own land, your birthright. <laughs> they are giving someone else, not you. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I mean, for who? This is the truth, I'm telling you. That was what was happening. That was what was happening in Libya. I know right now there's nothing we can do to bring back Muammar Gaddafi. But believe me, you, African leaders, go back to the policies of Muammar Gaddafi. Go back to them. Do not sleep on them. I mean, for what? For, for who? I know most African leaders don't even want to hear about the policies that Muammar Gaddafi had. They don't want to hear it. Because they are scared. <laughs> I know you will say, no, this chap is just talking. He doesn't know what he's talking about. No, I know what I'm talking about. And the fact is that I know that you are scared as a leader. <laughs> you don't want to end up like Muammar Gaddafi. That's why some of you are far from being leaders. Some of you are just fortunate that you are in those seats. Because you are not willing to go that far for your people. You are not willing to go that far for your African continent. Yes. I mean, for what? For who? Huh? <laughs> Very sad indeed. I mean, for what? For, for who? Please, each and every one of you who is seeing this video, you have a task. Remind your African leaders of what Muhammad Gaddafi had made Libya to be like. Remind them. <laughs> Mention their name in this video. Believe me, you, they can take away one, but they cannot take away all of you. I mean, for what? For, for who? <laughs> I'm telling you, the policies of Muammar Gaddafi, African leaders, please do not sleep on them. I beg you, find out how the Libyans were living during Muammar Gaddafi's reign or rule. Go and find out. I mean, for what? For who? The problem is that you like watching pony. <laughs> I'm sorry about that one. <laughs> I went off. But yeah, go and research. No one is ever going to talk about it. No one is ever going to remind you that Libya was heaven on earth. They will never remind you. And to Muammar Gaddafi, may your soul rest in peace. You great son of Africa. Thank you so much.